Richie and Jake in the Sonic Dad Studios, and we are here to bring you Project 83, the Sonic Micro Crossbow Mark II. Why is it called Mark II? Because Mark I indicates a first version, which in this case was Project Number 56, which yeah. came out a few years ago. Yeah, that was uh, 2015, right? It's been a little while. That was one of our more popular projects, and it was made out of popsicle sticks and some little hair barrettes. So we've kind of uh, upped the ante with this design. It, uh, of course, is made out of 3D printed parts, but it's got a little integrated trigger and some nice features like a little grip made out of O-rings on the handle and a little grip across here. And this design also comes with a very handy target slash display stand. Stick it on there like that. You can put that on your dresser on your desk. Now the instructions for this project can be purchased and downloaded from the website and if you don't have access to a 3D printer, we actually do have a version, a kit version of the same product that is available for sale at sonicdad.com slash store. Looks just like this. Yep, all the stuff you need to build it will come inside of that kit. So if you don't have access to a printer, don't fear. We got you covered. You can get that here and there's a link in the description. Well, let's get going on this project. So let's talk about the parts and tools you'll need. We have the 3D printed parts here, uh, crossbow and display base. If you have a 3D printer of your own like this one, you can print your own parts. If you don't have a 3D printer of your own, you can check your local high school or library, and most maker spaces have them too. In addition to the printer parts, you're gonna need a few additional supplies. We've got here some nylon cord, Q-tips, in this case black, and a few different sizes of O-rings and different fasteners. You can get the details for all this inside the instruction. You'll also need a couple of simple tools. This is a size zero Phillips screwdriver and you'll need some cutters. These are uh, flush cuts, but you could use diagonal cutters or even scissors. It's also nice to have uh, a lighter or an electric match like this. We're going to be melting the end of our bowstring in a later step. Okay, so we're gonna take the hex standoff, our 256 screw. Once you get that screwed in fully, you're gonna back it off one revolution. And you're gonna want two of these hex standoff assemblies. So here I'm gonna build my second one. Same as before, screw it all the way in and then back it off one revolution, one turn. Okay, we're gonna start with rail piece number one and you can check the instructions for the part identification. These little grooves in the side, we're gonna make sure we put those down on the work surface. Then we're gonna take the hex standoff assemblies and feed them in the back, one there and one there. It should look like that when you're done. Now we'll take our grip piece and just slide that over those two hex standoffs, like that. Okay, so now we'll take the, the last two hex standoffs, and now these are plain, they do not have fasteners in them yet, and we'll put those in the two hex features in that first rail, like that. Does that look okay, Jay? It looks good. And then we'll take the center spacer, and that fits down right on top of those front two spacers, like that. How's that look? Looks great. Okay. Can I shoot it? Not yet. <sighs> For the next step, we work on the trigger. You just grab this trigger unit here and drop it right into place. It's like a jigsaw puzzle and it will fit just perfectly. And then we will use the left rail. Now make sure that the groove side, this is the smooth side, this is the groove side. Make sure that the groove side is facing up because you want it to match. And you'll drop that right into place over those four standoffs. And then we're gonna finish this up by taking two of our 256 screws and driving them into the back standoffs here at the back of the crossbow. Now we get to attach the limbs to the crossbow. We'll start with one side, the side that's facing up here. All right, I've got that first screw started. Now I'll just bring it over to the standoff and drive that in there. Now I'm gonna go in and then back out about half a turn or so. We want it loose. Then we'll add the second screw in the same way. Now we can do the same on the other side. Set that right there. I'm gonna get my last two screws and get it started in the limb. There are two adjustments that we need to do this crossbow. They're really easy, but they're very important to get it to function well. The first one is to get these three surfaces flush. What we can do is push and pull on this trigger. You can see how it moves that. So I'm going to get those exactly flush right about there, and then I'm going to squeeze it so it doesn't move. Now what I can do is I can 
come over here to the limbs and tighten these guys up and that will prevent that centerpiece from moving with the correct alignment. And we'll just snug these guys up. We don't want to go too tight, break something, but we want it snug enough that it won't move. And there we go. For the next step, we're gonna need a crossbow bolt. To make a bolt out of a Q-tip, we're gonna cut off one end and we're gonna cut as close as we can to the cotton side, leaving as much of the shaft of the bolt as we can. Okay, so to make this alignment, I'm gonna put the crossbow bolt in just back to this feature you can see right here on the hold down. You definitely don't wanna go all the way back. It needs to stop right there. Now, to make the adjustment, what I can do is move the grip. You can see how it's moving above the bolt. And what I want is I want that hold down feature to touch the bolt. So I'm going to hold that down a little bit. I just want light pressure on it. And then I can tighten the fastener so that that grip piece doesn't move and I've got the perfect alignment. And we'll flip it over on the other side and do the same thing. And we'll check it. That looks really good. All right, next we're going to take these little O-rings here and install them into the right and left side rails to create a really cool no-slip grip right here. That's a tongue twister. And I navigate no grip well. Slip. A slip grip, rip. So you're just going to take those and with your finger just push them into the into the hole. Hole. <laughs> into the feature. Feature, I'm like a facet, but I know it's not facet. And there you have it, the no slip grip is now complete. Or the no grip slip. <laughs> Depending on how good you are. So next we're gonna take these 10 O-rings and form a grip for our handles. And we're gonna start just by looping it over the back of the handle and then kind of slipping it over the top or the front rather, and then just sliding the entire O-ring towards the top of the handle. And there you have it, a really cool looking grip to your crossbow. Next step is to build the bowstring for our crossbow, and to do that, we need to print out the bowstring template from the instructions. We're gonna start with about a 12 inch piece of our nylon cord, cut that off. First thing I'm going to do is fold one end over, and I want about roughly three inches just so I have enough for my knot. Grab it like this and tie a knot in the end. And I'm not gonna tighten it right away because what I want to do is come to the template, kind of massage this until I get the loop and the knot position to match the template. And that looks pretty darn close. What do you think, Jake? I think that is a good looking slip knot. And then we're gonna, thank you. We're gonna tighten that nice and snug so it doesn't slip out. Now it's not a slip knot because it's tight. <laughs> Correct. Now I'm gonna hold this end exactly on the template and I'm gonna roll this back. And if you have a helper that's interested in helping. Mm, that would be nice. And I'm just going to the string on the template. This is going to help me get the bowstring the right length. Okay. Now I'm going to pick this up, tie a knot in the end like before, and I'm going to leave it loose so I can massage the, the size of the loop in the position. And what we want to do is double check the bowstring on this template. You can see I'm short there. So we're going to massage that a little bit. Okay, now with the bowstring the right length, all I need to do now is trim off the ends. I like to leave maybe an eighth of an inch or you could leave a quarter inch like that. It's helpful to have a little flame so that uh, you can melt the end and don't burn the house down. I'm kind of a <laughs> pyromaniac. I'm just going to apply a little bit of heat to get the end of that to melt. That looks good. That will keep the end of the string from fraying. And there we have the finished bowstring. What do you think, Jake? 
Mm, I love the smell of melted nylon in the morning. Yeah. Now the next step is to install the bowstring. We're gonna begin by placing the loop over the knock on one of the bow limbs. Now this part is important because we need to flex the limbs in order to get the second loop over the second knock. But we want to flex the limbs as little as possible so they retain their maximum spring. So to do that, and you can see the way I'm gripping it here, you can pick your favorite one, but I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure equally on both sides so that both limbs flex the same amount. And I'm just gonna continue doing that until I have just enough to make that really hard for our camera lady. And there you go. We've got our crossbow built. Now let's build the target and display stand. So what we'll do is we'll start with these two triangular pieces. Now we need to install a screw in each one of these three holes. And it's important that the head be in the side where this little T feature is right here. Now that I have all three fasteners in, I can kind of snug these down. You don't want to over tighten it. But make them snug. Now we can attach these three feet and all you have to do is just thread those right over the screws and just snug them down with your fingers. Now we're going to take this piece put it into the slot in the top like this and then we're going to slide it up so it locks in place. Now we'll take the target and put it into the T feature like that. Turn it over and you can see we've got two holes for screws. And I will just install these two screws in here. Leave the first one somewhat loose till I get the second one in place. There we have our target display stand. And this is how you place the crossbow onto the display stand. Simply place it into that groove right about the middle o-ring is perfect seat it down into place and then very carefully stop touching it carefully carefully and there you have it cocking your crossbow and loading the bolt is pretty simple basically you're going to put a finger on each side of the rail like this on the bowstring and pull it back underneath this bolt hold down until it snaps into the groove now pet peeve here. Folks, this is what? A bolt. A bolt, not an arrow. A lot of folks call these crossbow arrows. These are crossbow bolts. Actually, it's just a key tip. No. <laughs> Beauty is in the IV holder, yeah. but these are our crossbow bolts. bolts. Okay, with the string cocked, now we can just take the crossbow bolt and slide it under until it stops like that. So when shooting this, remember folks, don't point this at anything you don't actually want to shoot. That includes people, animals, or anything of value. So that's why we have a target. Shoot the target, not the people. Now, the best way to shoot this is to simply grab it with your two fingers here, right along the O-rings at the top, and kind of sight along the barrel and pull your trigger when ready to destroy. Hey, nice there shot. There you go. Nice shooting, Jake. Now, that tipped over pretty easy. It wasn't a direct hit. It's designed to. It's designed okay, to. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's actually intentionally top heavy so that when it hit, you get this nice topple effect, which is really handy, especially for younger shooters. Yeah. You know you hit it when it tips over. It's nothing worse than not being able to claim your kill. Let's see if I can hit the target. Now, my distance is 18 inches. Can you okay. Do I don't know. We'll see. Hey. Direct hit. If you have a buddy who has a crossbow like yours, you can have a shooting contest. What's the prize? Glory. Glory? Okay. Are you gonna count? Are you gonna call it? Uh, one, two. Hey! <laughs> I shot the camera going go like, sorry, you knocked my target down. And you go, Ugh! <laughs> Don't ever shoot somebody with the crossbow. Ever. Ever. We're going to try the target domino theory here, see if this works. Okay. On the count of three. Which three? My three. Okay. One, two, three. You shot it. I missed. Okay, Jake, let's try for distance. Okay. Let me calibrate for wind. <laughs> 
Now you are aiming for the red target, right? Well, I'll tell you after I pull the trigger. Okay. Wait, are we doing it together? Yes. Okay. One, one. two, together. <laughs> I shot the red one. <laughs> so we, so we might need to, to have a slow-mo repeat. Replay. We're gonna try a speed competition. On the count of three, we have to cock it, load it, and the first person to get their target down wins. Now, do we have to do glory. it in that order? You can do it in cock any order you want. Okay, the okay. first target that goes down. Any projectile. No, no. <laughs> From the crossbow. Okay. All right, ready? One, two, three. Ah! Uh, oh, missed. You are dead eye. Dang, gentlemen. Maybe we need to trade crossbow. No. Have you even. Have you tampered with this? Where, where are you shooting from? Danger mode. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Ultra distance. <laughs> oh, I actually wasn't that far off by now. <laughs> that is ultra distance. I'm gonna have a gangster shoot. Oh, I thought that would be a pizza. In <laughs> okay. Okay. Gangsters don't say when, they just go. Oh, oh, neither of us came <laughs> even anywhere close. All right, boys and girls, <laughs> observe the accuracy of proper technique in play. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can do that. Oh, it hit. Did it you did hit. I, I, it was a glancing blow. It was a glancing blow. That's it for this project. We hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun putting it together. And if you had a good time building yours, then let us know about it. Down in the comments or send us an email. Let us know how your experience was. Send us pictures. Send us your videos. We'd love to see them. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, I'm Richie. And I'm Jake. We'll see you later. In addition to the 3D printed parts, you're going to need a few additional things, including nylon cord. Blah. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to our channel. And visit our website, sonicdad.com.